Hi, this is Sean and VJ, and we're um, we're presenting on the article "Dial a Forecast: A Speedy Way to Examine Multiple Business Scenarios" by James A. Weasel, that was published um, in the Journal of Accountancy on December of 2006. Uh, some of the key concepts that we'll be illustrating today is we'll show you how to use three Excel tools to make your forecast ca forecast calculations a breeze. These tools will be spinners, scroll bars, and conditional formatting. So in business, there are many what-if scenarios. Let's assume that we forecast a 2% sales growth rate in the upcoming business cycle. This forecast will affect performance metrics such as return on sales and earnings per share. But what happens to those metrics if the growth rate is 5% or negative 1%? We'll show how to use these, how to use three Excel tools, spinners, scroll bars, and conditional formatting to make forecast calculations a breeze. So here we have the uh, quarterly profit and loss forecast um, for X, Y, and Z company. Um, the three, the forecast is based on, on the following assumptions. Base quarter sales, quarterly sales growth rate, sales return and uh, sales returns and allowance rate cost of sales rate marketing and promotion and general administrative administrative administration expenses um, so let's assume that you want to evaluate the effect with five percent growth rate the effect of a five percent growth rate um, what you want to do now is you want to change um, well first you want to use a, a index key and, and just base, and just enter 100 Take that. Now we want to format cell B18. Um, to to reflect that index key. And what we're going to do is we're going to equal cell B18. Um, it's going to equal D22 divided by 1000. Enter. And um, that will give us the formula we need. Now, if we, whenever there was a, a growth rate or, or a loss that we wanted to show in this, in this P&L statement, then we, we could manually input that information. But when you're doing a lot of, when you've got a lot of numbers in front of you and, and a lot of adjustments to make, then that can become cumbersome. So, so what we want to do is we want to add a, add a spinner function that will um, increase or decrease as we need it. Um, so what you want to do is first make sure that your developer tab appears in the ribbon. Um, click on developer and go to insert look for the spinner tab which is right here um, you're gonna see that that the that the mouse turns into a, a crosshair since we want to kind of um, just click that right over there and and format that how we want to so now we want to link link this um, this spinner function to this particular cell b18 you want to right click on that Go to format control. Um, we'll bring that in. And what we want to include in these values are um, for this for this particular statement, the current value is going to be 100. Minimum value stays zero. Maximum value goes to 200. And incremental change goes to 10. We want to link this cell, link this formula to cell. to D22, um, you just press OK. Um, now let's see if that function works. So as you can see, the you can click the spinner and, and it, it'll increase or de decrease by uh, increments of 1% um, based on the, and, and the index cell will also be um, affected by by the clicks of button. And that's one way you can use, one thing, one way you can um, use this function to uh, more efficiently manage your data. Okay, so that's how you create spinner buttons. Um, so you use spinner buttons to change small numbers like percentage from 5% uh, to 6% or 10%. But if you wish to control values over a broad range, say 80,000 to 120,000, the scroll bar is easy to use. The steps to create a scroll bar are virtually the same as a spinner. Uh, but as before, you should um, uh, first create an index key and a formula. So in D D21, let's uh, let's type 1,000, 
and uh, format the formula in B17 as uh, 1000, which is D21, uh, times 100. Okay, that will give us the uh, a formula that will, that will help us uh, change numbers uh, according to uh, our uh, forecast. Okay, so in order to um, go create the scroll bar, we go to develop a tab, uh, uh, develop a ribbon, and then we choose scroll bar. And yeah, that's where it shows the scroll bar. So click on it, and that will bring us a scroll bar here, and then we will. We have scroll bar in this particular cell. Okay, so that's that's our scroll bar, and now <coughs> let's uh, format our scroll bar by right-clicking it and then choosing Format Control Tab, and let's choose our current value as thousand, and our minimum value being uh, eight hundred, with a maximum value of twelve hundred. And that's our incremental bit 10. And let's link the scroll bar to D21. And after formatting this uh, scroll bar, let's say OK. And now our scroll bar is ready to move. So all we have to do is move. And then you see how things change uh, using the scroll bar. And that's, that's making our focus so easier, so simpler. Uh, that we can bring up different scenarios within no time. Okay, that's our second step. As we said, this is a, a second key function of our Excel um, in this video. And the last key function of this video is to show you how to highlight the results. We want to make our projections more graphic. So we use conditional formatting. Uh, it's a tool that highlights cells when they achieve a predetermined value or range of values. Okay, in this case of XYZ, we want to draw attention to periods in which the return on sales, which is um, 814, uh, is negative or between 0 to 0 and 2% and greater than 2%. So let's begin with cell B14. Okay, so let's conditionally format this uh, so that uh, if B14 is less than 0, um, our the Excel will indicate us with a red background and telling us that this is less than zero. So in order to conditional format, we should go to Home Ribbon and then choose Conditional Formatting and then choose Highlight Cell Rules and then click on Less Than. Okay, so we want this to be highlighted as a red. If that B uh, 14 is less than 0. So in order to format, so click on here and then go to custom format and this will come up and then we want uh, this to be bold uh, and a border we want to be our government of border and then just fill the space with red color and then font here we see here it says automatic let's choose white font okay and then say okay okay you see it's automatically sh uh, showing us um, uh, what we have conditioned so if as long as this B cell B14 is less than zero it will appear red uh, as, as shown on the screen now let's conditionally form and do the same thing with cell C14 uh, here we want uh, if uh, the sales of return or, va or values are, are between 0 and 0 0.02 which is 2% um, we want it to be highlighted in a different color. So let's just type in that 0 and 2%. Okay, we want this to be uh, formatted in this following manner. Just say bold again and then choose white. And then let's fill the space with uh, yellow color. Say okay. Okay, let's say okay. I will show us. Okay, so that's the for uh, that's the condition format for this, and similarly for uh, uh, D14 as well. So that's condition format, and here we want uh, um, greater than two percent. So let's just go there and just say two percent, and we want uh, it 
to be filled with uh, um, let's say some um, let's go with the same color that we should, that we see here and they say okay so so as things uh, change here we see uh, the the numbers changing okay there and then and our excel sheet is more graphical so so with this arrangement uh, with this setup that we have shown in this video you will be able to easily build a useful set of future scenarios so management can focus on preparing these conditions so that will be give you a really uh, uh, comparative advantage over others uh, to help your boss provide uh, forecast within no time